I see some devotees here who I haven't seen in a long time. And for those of you that haven't met Chandrasekhar Swami yet, he's over here. Currently living in the Big Apple, New York, and came all the way to participate with us. And Shama Sundar Prabhu, who's... So from north, east, south, and west, we're, we're covered. And many of you are from closer by, and thank you all for coming. I guess it's good to be in the central part of the United States because it makes it easier for people from those two extremes, East Coast, West Coast. Houston's not so bad. And just in case you haven't noticed, t before you leave the temple room, take a close look at the Murti, Srila Prabhupada's Murti. You'll see a little difference. Compliments of the artist, Mochan Prabhu, and his relationship with Premananda that inspired him to make yet another mold from which so many, oh, so many other murtis of Prabhupada have been made all over the world from this same artist and now a smiling, gentle smile, gentle smile, serene smile. And this weekend's event is dedicated to him, to our founder Acharya, and I identified the topic I'd like to speak out, furthering the legacy of our founder, Acharya. Now, usually we use the word mission. For some reason, I like the word legacy. In case you want to know what does legacy mean, it can mean different things. Sometimes it means property, like money and buildings and passing it on to the next generation. That's the, the legacy of the person that, or persons that gathered. But it also means what we're doing, the forefathers, and their, in our case, because some of us here are Prabhupada disciples. Most of you are disciples of Prabhupada's disciples, so grand disciples. And that's, you know, that because we have inherited something very valuable. I mean, you could list many valuable things. Eskhan itself, Prabhupada's transcendental writings, the mood, the purity, the gifts of the holy name, and so on. So carrying and furthering the legacy of our founder, Acharya. There's a nice saying, someone sent this to me. A filial person is one who inherits the will of the ancestors and spreads their activities and contributions. Pick your pick. There's this screen, there's that screen, there's that screen. We don't have one on the ceiling yet, but you can look in any direction you like. Thank you very much. That was a jai, I guess. Yeah, jai. Uh-oh. Now, where does this quote come from? And is Nandi Mukhi here? Not yet. It's from uh, the grandson of Confucius. So you're like the grandchildren of Srila Prabhupada, most of those of you here, the disciples of the disciples. 
So here, here's the fellow, the grandson, and here's what he wrote, what, what's up top in Chinese. And he is the only grandson of Confucius, and he dedicated himself <clears throat> to take the teachings of Confucius and further them, repeat them, spread them, develop them, spread the activities and contributions of their ancestors. That's a filial person. That's supposed to be all of you. Some of you may know that before Srila Prabhupada met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he was an ardent, not casual, but ardent follower of Mahatma Gandhi. And that was part of the discussion during their first meeting. And Bhakti Siddhanta managed to. Prabhupada said, when I was growing up, I would always win arguments. He was he's good at not like arguing, but discussing and prevailing in discussions. It would always prevail. The first time he was defeated was Bhakti Siddhanta, and he was happy to be defeated. <laughs> Don't wait. Mm -hmm. Spiritual teachings are not dependent upon material circumstances. Now, you, there's no need to wait until India gets independence. The message, truth is truth. Present the truth, and it will ring. So because of his being a, such a strong follower of Mahatma Gandhi, during the Gandhi memorial, he was asked to be a a speaker, if not the keynote speaker, and he wrote a paper. And one of the main messages in the paper was, the way to honor a great person is not build a statue, name a building after them, name a street after them, name a bridge after them. Those things are done. But the way to honor a great person that's what we're focusing on. Carry forward the legacy of that great person. What Prabhupada said is create a community where the values that that person held and upheld will be manifest in this world so people can see it works. These are values that are viable and powerful and they work. So here we are with, with devotees from different communities all over, all over the place. And we're here to honor this great personality. Now, <clears throat> there are different ways to describe what that, which he valued so much and to build communities that are resonating and manifesting those values. The, the seven principles of ISKCON is one place to look. We'll spend a little bit of time this evening looking at two of them. Another is this phrase that many of us have heard. Books are the basis, purity is the force, preaching is the essence, utility is the principle. If you haven't heard it, it's a good time to hear it. For even for the first time. Books are the basis. In the, in the seven purposes of ISKCON, that was number seven for the aforementioned printing and distributing books. Purity of the force isn't specifically mentioned in those terms, but it's establishing communities, we'll see shortly. Preaching is the essence, propagating and propagating is words that he used in the first two of the seven purposes. And utility is the principle. That's Utility is the principle is um, a paraphrase of Rupa Goswami's teachings of renunciation. True renunciation is that which is in re relation to Hari, you engage that which is in relation to Hari in the service of Hari. Yukta Bhairagya Uchate. 
Hari Sambandha Vastuna, thank that our relation to Hari should be used in the service to Hari. Utility is the principle. Some time ago, I was in a different city than Naperville, somewhere, and a Prabhupada disciple was speaking to me about the good old days, or, you know, we, we all know how much emphasis Prabhupada invested in us in preaching. There was at one time a BBT publication that had a black cover and just letters on the front, something very similar in size to the um, Brahma Samhita, Sri Brahma Samhita book, Preaching is the Essence. This now is a reprint with a different cover, but Preaching is the Essence, and it's something that all brahmacharis had a copy of, and we read it periodically and tried to live it. Preaching is the essence. And these preaching is the essence message, it's found right in the first two purposes, to systematically propagate spiritual knowledge to society at large and to educate all people in the techniques of spiritual life in order to check the imbalance of values in life and to achieve real unity and peace in the world. Very high goal. Two is similar to one, but it's different. To propagate a consciousness of Krishna as it is revealed in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So preaching is the essence Utility is the principle. Books are the basis, and purity is the force. So, the topic I wanted to speak about this evening is purity. What it is, how to attain it, and why it's important, besides it's just one of those four pillars. Something that... <clears throat> An introspection reflex that I have learned over the years is if something isn't going well, I ask myself the question, if Prabhupada was present, would things get worse, stay the same, or get better? And if it's not getting better, it's either staying the same or getting worse. And the answer is easy, it would get better. And why was the difference? Because purity. Because purity is the force. So if any, if me, if I or any one of us wish to see something that isn't what it could be, should be, and we're making some efforts to make it what it could be, should be, but somehow not happening, ask yourself the question. If Prabhupada was in this situation, would it get better, stay the same, or get worse? And if it would get better, why? Because of purity. Because of purity, the, the, the mercy of Krishna was flowing. He was empowered. You know, Krishna Shakti, Vina Nahi, Tara Pravartana, from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Because he was receiving Krishna Shakti, he was able to do things that other people weren't able to do. Again and again and again and again. And then more in different places and different ways. Because of purity. So certainly we could say... Purity is something that we should strive for in our for, throughout our life. Wherever we are in our spiritual trajectory, don't become complacent. Continue to strive for purity. It's not like at some point the bell rings and now you're your purity. You can relax. That's not quite like that. Continue and continue and continue. Be become complacent. 
And you go backwards. Don't go backwards. Don't be complacent. Continue to strive for purity because purity is the force. So what is it? And then how to get it? There are some scripture references that help us understand. One of them is from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 13, texts 8 through 12. Some of you like Bhagavad Gita. And you know what those verses are. At the beginning of chapter 13, there's six questions. And the rest of thir Arjuna asked Krishna. Two pairs of three make six. Jnanam and Gayam, pr Purusha and Prakriti. What? Shatra and Shatra Gya. Matter and spirit, matter and spirit, matter and spirit. Pairs of two. So when it comes to knowledge, that's the answer to what is knowledge, is verses 8 through 12. And in those verses 8 through 12, look at it as many times as you like, and you'll see that each one of them, there's 20 items, each one of them is a quality. Amanitvam Badambitvam. Humility and pridelessness is how it starts. And Prabhupada concludes the purport, long purport, that the essence of spiritual life is humility. Without humility, you don't have spiritual life. With humility, you can build a spiritual life. And not just, you know, so then what does humility mean and so forth. And the first paragraph he describes this one principle printed here is the one that all the others rest upon. Mayi chananya yogena bhaktir avyabicharini. Bhaktir, that's avyabichari, constant and unalloyed. Bhaktir avyabichari, unto whom? Unto Krishna, mayi. Cha ananya. Yogena Bhaktir. There's somebody in the room. Their name is Ananya Bhakti Dasi. Unalloyed devotional service. And that's where the other qualities are achieved. And without that, they're not achieved. Or there's a shadow of those but not the, not the full thing, not the real thing, but a shadow of the real thing. So that's the purity. Constant and unalloyed devotion to Krishna. Constant and unalloyed devotion to Krishna. Avyabhichari is without a break. That's the constant. Avyabhichari, abhicharani without any break, uninterrupted and unalloyed service. Constant constant and, and unalloyed service. So there's a nice definition of what purity is. And there's many others. You may have your favorites. I'm going to get to one that's in two slides from now, but Bhaktya Tvananyaya, similar to Abhyavichari Bhakti. It's Undivided Devotion, Chapter 11. Vyavisayatmika Bhuti Ekeha. Focus, single minded. Intelligence is one. Intelligence upon Krishna. That's purity. Eka Manasa. This is from. Kapila Dave's teachings, the title of the chapter is Pure Devotional Service, and he's giving terms, words, and descriptions of pure devotional service, where the mind is in one place. It's very similar to the previous one. The previous one is the intelligence, this one is the mind. You know, everything, body, mind, words, everything dedicated to the Supreme. Avyabhichari Bhakti. 
is a term found in Bhagavatamrita and other places. I came across a, 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 a phrase while I was visiting in Connecticut from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 2, Chapter 3, verse number 10. You can look it up later if you like. I have become very fond of this verse because it's describing purity. And the phrase is simple. It's from Jiva Goswami's Sandarbhas. Vajaniya Parama Purusha Sukha Matra Svasukhatvam. Notice that that line is all hyphen, so it's one word but you can break it down into its parts. Sva means, that, look at the last line. I'm going to go through the Sanskrit. I like. Sva means one's own. Sukha means happiness. Sva sukha. And tvam means having the quality of, so that which has the quality of one's own happiness is parama purusha sukha. Parama Purusha Sukha. The, the happiness of the Supreme Person is one's own happiness. Matra means always. And Bhajaniya is just a nice adjective, a worshipable, the worshipable Parama Purusha's happiness. Parama Purusha Sukha. Matra. Always. Un uh, unceasing, unchanging, unvarying. Matra, svasukhatvam. That's purity. The way the Prabhupada has used it in that purport is he uses it as a definition, he explains it's a definition of desirelessness. Desirelessness in Buddhism, means anesthetizing the soul. But that's artificial because when the anesthesia wears off, the soul has desire. So purity is not the material desirelessness, dial it down and try to shut it off. Desire, make desire zero, become desireless. We're speaking about purity. Purity is not to become desireless in that sense because it's artificial. Why? Because by nature the soul has desire. Why? Because by nature the soul has a loving relationship with Krishna, which is a desire. The pre Lord has free will. We have tiny free will. So you can't become desireless. Even if you desire to become desireless, the desire is concomitant with the soul. So purity is where the desire, because everyone wants happiness without exception. Insects. I was w watching a couple of ladybugs in the room where I'm staying, looking for happiness. I don't know if they found it, but that's what they're looking for. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending, or combination, happiness, happiness. Search for happiness. And real happiness is svasukhatvam. Happiness is parama purusha sukha. Without any interruption. Matva, matra, excuse me, matra. Here's the, I looked, I'm searching to find how bhajaniya is used elsewhere. Worshipable or worthy of acceptance, object of devotion. So bhajaniya, that's an adjective describing parama purusha. Now, it's generic, but for us, it's Krishna. Parama Purusha. That's purity. And suppose you're not there yet. Most of us are not there yet. And we're in different stages of getting there. 
And you're going to see this slide. This has some significance for me. It's borrowed specifically from Sachinandan Swami's Japa book, where he's expressing and teaching alignment principle. This is so, the, it's alignment exercise. So if you want purity, but you're not there yet, or in his case, it's in relation to chanting japa. If you want your japa to be qualitatively improved or better, if you want your pure to be qualitatively improved or better, if you want life to be like that, better, towards the spiritual goal, be clear what the spiritual goal is, and then the alignment of your values, and make choices that align with that value of purity, and then live it, not just make a choice and then forget it, and then remember, oh, I forgot it. It's just, so it's a continuous process of alignment, of body, mind, and heart with achieving purity, because purity is the force. If we want to do what Prabhupada, with the legacy that Prabhupada handed us, to do it effectively and gradually in the course of our lives and collectively together, better and better, purity is required. Oh, align your choices and your body and your mind consistently with that objective. In the past two, two to three weeks, I've been discussing the lives of some pure devotees. And the, anyone you can take, there, there are many. We discussed Queen Kunti and her not wanting her mind to budge an inch from anything but Krishna, etc., etc. So her prayers are fantastic. We then spent some time discussing Grandfather Bhishma, and, you know, both of them have absolute humility, although their personalities are very different. And both of them have absolute fixation on the happiness of Krishna. How they conducted their lives was different, for sure. But there was one thing, Krishna's happiness, without going through all of those, because we spent hours and hours discussing. But it's, it's a principle and you can take any other example. It's easy to take, take some examples. Bali Maharaj, Pradhan Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva wasn't there to begin with, but that's where he, that's where he got. He just, all he wanted was what Vishnu wanted. Etc., etc., etc. Think of any, the six Goswamis or any of the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Haridas Thakur, etc., etc., etc. Is humility, amanitvam, adamvitvam, they have this quality or character of humility and being very focused on the happiness of the personality of Godhead and striving. So I, found, I looked up those words. I was very interested in this phrase from the Sandarvas. Do it again. You can, you'll hear it several times. Bhajaniya, Parama Purusha, Sukha, Matra, Svasukhatvam. Bhajaniya, Parama Purusha, Sukha, Matra, Svasukhatvam. One word. So I, t I, I took those words and wanted to look them up and see where, what are the other contexts that you find those words. And one of the contexts I found them, no, not astonishing, was the kind of singular focus the gopis have. And many of you know, there's this phrase, Ramya ka chedupasana vrajabhadhu vargena ya kalpita. This is a description. It's at the sort. 
The source is a commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam by Srinath Chakravarti. And in the invocation or introduction to his commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, he, this, this is where this phrase comes from. The Vrajavadu Vargena, that's the, the groups of the gopis, Shishirata Shama Sundara. They have the best upasana. Upasana means worship. According to this commentary, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu considered that the, the method Ramya Kachit Upasana Vrajavadu Vargena Va Kalpita. The gopis were, are the best. There is no better method of worship, upasana, than that was demonstrated by the gopis. The painting that you see on the screen, it's from a scene from Srimad Bhagavatam during one of the seasons when Krishna had Rasa dance, it was the autumn season. And he went to Vangsivat and he played his flute. And the gopis were forcefully pulled by the flute of Krishna to come to be with him at Vangsivat. And there at Vangsivat they engaged in Rasa dance. And for two reasons, the painting is showing, Krishna disappeared. One was, he wants to be alone with Radha. Another reason said was, he detected some pride. Oh, how fortunate we are. Not material pride, but pride that he didn't like. And so he disappeared. Just poof, disappeared. And the gopis went mad, searching for him and imitated his movements and asked the trees and the creepers and the vines and have you seen Krishna, where did he go? And Krishna was watching here in this painting from behind a tree on a full moon night to see what would they do? How much love did they have for him in the mood of separation? So in that section in Chaitanya Charitamrita, these same words are used. Matra, same as in this phrase of Jiva Goswami, Sandarbhas. And it, also the word is used, Tat Parya. Tat Parya. They have one, in, their intention is one thing. Same as those other references. This, this is on the standard of purity. So I'm going to read. This is Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describing the purity of the gopis. And you see the verses I'm reading from. The love of the gopis is called Ra, the Rudha Bhava. It is pure and spotless. It is not at any time lust. He quotes from Bhakti Rasamrita to Sindhu. The pure love of the gopis has become celebrated by the name, quote, lust. The dear devotees of the Lord headed by Sri Uddhava desire to taste that love. Lust and love have different characteristics just as iron and gold have different natures. The desire to gratify one's own senses is kama or lust, but the desire to please the senses of Lord Krishna is prema, love. The object of lust is only, there's this word matra, only the enjoyment of one's own senses. 
That's the tat pariya, the intention. However, love caters to the enjoyment of Lord Krishna, and thus it is very powerful, regardless of the the rasa or the position. It coming to that state for any one of us, aside from you know what's our siddha daya and all those very elevated things, pure devotion, purity, is to come to that stage. Social customs, scriptural injunctions, bodily demands, fruit of action, shyness, patience, bodily pleasure, sense gratification, and the path of varnashram dharma which is difficult to give up. The gopis have forsaken all these, as well as their own relatives, and their punishment and scolding for the sake of serving Lord Krishna. They render loving service to him for the sake of his enjoyment. That's a superlative example of desirelessness that Jiva Goswami describes in his Sandarbhas. That is called firm attachment to Lord Krishna. It is spotlessly pure, like a clean cloth that has no stain. Therefore, lust and love are quite different. Lust is like dense darkness, but love is like the bright light. Thus, there is not the slightest taint of lust in the gopis' love. Their relationship with Krishna is only again the word matra, for the sake of his enjoyment, swasukhatvam. Their happiness is his happiness. No, the platform of pure devotion is equal. We came across this in our discussion about Quinti and Bhishma Dev. In the, in the parting words, before, just before Bhishma left, Makra Sankranti had come. The sun was moving into the northerly direction. He prayed to the gopis that they bless him, that he would attain Krishna in this form of ri- driving Arjuna's chariot. I mean, that was his heart's dedication. He didn't have, he didn't hang, let me become a gopi or something like that. <laughs> he was very happy in his relationship with Krishna. And that's, that's a sign also of Swasukhatvam. It's Krishna's happiness. He, his happiness was Krishna's happiness. I'm making this emphasis because there's sometimes misunderstanding, so it's not good to have misunderstanding. It's good to have right understanding. The standard of pure devotion isn't what, what you're... Rasa with Krishna is. Your know, standard of pure devotion is Krishna's happiness. This we'll step back. Within Krishna is everything. Say it negatively. There isn't something that exists that's outside of Krishna. Or the way Prabhupada said it's very simple. There's Krishna and there's Krishna's and there's not a third thing and the whole creation of God. There's Krishna, and there's Krishna's. So the varieties of happiness that Krishna has, is there a limit? There's no limit. And so the varieties of love of his loving devotees is without limit. And the standard of that love in its stage of perfection is purity. The purity is where there's no separate interest. Say it differently, same thing differently. Some of you may have heard what may sound like a harsh statement by Bhakti Siddhanta. There's no love in this world. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I love my children, I love my wife or husband. I, Etc. I love my dog. I, I love, you know, I, I love. There's love. There's love. There's love. And his point is, 
There's no love in this world. Real love is otherworldly because love in this world, there's always a separate interest. That what's in it for me? Now, what's that happiness where there isn't even a, a fragrance, a hint, a touch of what's in it for me, like my happiness? What's that? That's purity. One more time. Bhajaniya, Parama Purusha Sukha, Matra, Svasukatvam, Matra, only the happiness of Parama Purusha. Only, always, in all circumstances. That's very elevated. And the, uh, we, have, we, we have been given, at least, the opportunity to know what it is, back to the question that I asked earlier in this, what is it and how to get there? We have to know what it is in order to get there. It's really simple. You have a GPS. Turn your GPS on and start driving. Don't tell your GPS what your destination is. The GPS is going to tell you where you are on the road, but it's not going to tell you how to get to your destination because you didn't put in the destination. But if you know the destination, you have a good GPS, and then, you know, the satellite is still working, it'll tell you where to turn left, where to turn right. Sometimes we go to Gita Nagri and they're doing some bridge construction. And it tells you, bridge out, you got to go that way. And there's signs in the road that say detour, but your GPS will tell you too. Because you know the destination. So where are you? It's wherever you are. That's where you are. And the destination is where you want to go. So this e evening's discussion is purity is where we want to go. So what is it? Why do we want to go there? Once upon a time, I was a little kid. And it's a true story. I was a little kid. And I was born in a, a Christian family, and we heard about heaven. So I asked mom and dad, what's it like there? Instead of saying, I don't know, I just got a pat on the head. Oh, isn't that cute? Guests would come to the home. They'd have me stand up and say, say it, say it. Go ahead, say it. It was embarrassing. I ran out of the room. Instead of saying, they don't know. So I went to the priest. The priest didn't know either. And what's the travel advertisement? Why should I want to go there? What's it like? So they don't know. I mean, at least those people I asked didn't know. So what's spiritual life anyways? What's it like there? The Bhagavatam gives us, and our acharyas expand further and further, like purity. What is it? I'll say it again. People do things because we want happiness. Generally speaking, the idea of happiness is senses meet sense objects, there's a buzz, and that's called happiness. I want happiness. And then there's different fill in the blank of happiness for me is... And so I pursue happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Here we are. America. You know, all men are created equal. And they're endowed with their creator with certain inalienable rights. Pursuit of happiness. So it's, it's, it's not, pursuit of happiness isn't something bad. It's something that's of the soul. But what is it? And how to get there. So 
the definition of happiness or the definition of purity is where one's happiness, one more time, bhajaniya, parama purusha sukha, matra svasukhatvam. That's purity. That Put that in your GPS and live your life. And make decisions in alignment with, with that in case you're don't, not paying attention to your GPS. Super Soul will tell you, and Scripture will tell you, and Guru Sadhu Shastra will tell you. But supposing you, you know, you're, you're, your receiver is off, then you're going to make decisions that are goofy or in alignment with something other than purity. And then you're going to have some problems. We were discussing. Material life is a continuation of problem solving. Here comes one, here comes ten. You, 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 kind of, you forget, forget the goal of life or the, what purity is or what ha- Krishna's happiness is and you're engaged in problem solving. And you work through the problem and then you have more problems. And it keeps going on and on and on and on and on without any solution to the problems. What's the solution? Purity is the force. No, pleasing Krishna. To the, to the degree that one's own happiness is a non-issue. Exactly as it was described about the gopis. But we also heard this exactly the same thing with Kunti and Bhishma. And take any, any other pure devotee. There's only one thing. Let's, let's say Prahlad. When Dev asked him, take something, what did he say? He said, there's nothing between us. I'm not a, I'm not a merchant, Vanik. I don't do something to get something. So please don't ask me to take something. Because between us, there's only one thing. You're the master, and I'm the servant. And there's nothing else. Now, that's, a pu- that's purity. And we're not there yet, which is quite okay. We want, it, it, it's important to know what it is and to want to get there, and then to strive to get there by the... the the methods that Srimad Bhagavatam is giving or Guru Sadhu Shastra have given us. Know what it is and keep striving in that direction. So that's this evening's topic. Purity is the force. To spread Krishna consciousness, to be Krishna conscious, to have a family, to have a community, to have even one relationship that's transcendental, where there isn't any consideration of what's in it for me or how do I feel about things today. That's, that's very pure. That's very pure. Purity is the force. So let's see if there's some discussion. Well, that was quick. Now, I purposely wanted the, this, these classes to be short. I have a tendency to talk too much. But short is sweet. Keep trying. Hare Krishna, Guru there we go. Uh, So my question is, like, we know that we are here and we are not pure. But we wanted to go somewhere. I mean, as in we want to do something good. But we know we cannot. Then how do you deal with that guilt feeling which you have inside? You know that you wanted to do something good. But you are programmed in such a way at this point because we are not there yet. And you wanted to go there, but in in the process you make some decisions where you feel guilt that... Uh, so how to console yourself or how to reconcile and deal in those situations? How to deal with negative emotions that you, you're not there yet. 
and you make make decisions that are less than perfect and sometimes dumb or mistaken. And how to deal with those emotions? That's the question. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And if that didn't work, try try this one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Because Cheta Darpana Marjanam. Now, you may want to look at your the qualitative way in which you do, and then you may, you know, so going forward, I'm less, there's acceptance of the fact that I, not just you, us, we, you say me, I am less than perfect. And I accept it. No. And because I'm less than perfect, my understandings are less than perfect, my decisions are less than perfect, I'm less than perfect, my relationships are less than perfect, and let me acknowledge that others may also be like me, and I'm not going to feel an attitude towards the, the other less than perfect people. Let me make my own heart pure. So, you just keep, then you, then you, what you, you step back. Step one, mode of goodness. Introspect. If the, if this imperfection that there is there, there's probably much more. Because I'm being engaged in the process of bhakti, I'm recognizing the anartas that were then that I didn't even know were there before. And then there's more, and then there's more, and then there's more. And so I'm acknowledging and accepting it's there. Now, how did, for, for you and for me and for all of us, how did bhakti begin? You're in this reflective space, and bhakti began because there's some faith. And then seeing that preliminary faith, Andau Shraddha, Krishna sent a devotee, Sadhu Sangha. And in the association of that devotee, or those devotees, I started doing devotional practices. Bhajana Kriya. And from those devotional practices, now I have the privilege of seeing all the anartas that, that I didn't see before. Welcome to the club. You're, 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 you're doing very well. Now, so you continue the same. Bhajana Kriya, Sadhu Sangha Bhajana Kriya. Because that's the, that's the purification process. Now, the, the mistake that were made, what does Krishna say about mistakes that are made? It's right in Bhagavad Gita. Sadhu Eva Samantavya. Krishna considers you a sadhu. Me? Sadhu? Look at my mistakes. That's okay. So what's, what, where your attention should go instead of to the mistakes and the mess that you made or the damage that it was done or something. What, there, uh, there it is on the screen. Tat Parya. What's your intention? If you, you realign your intention today, but not just what happened yesterday or five minutes ago, but let me realign my intention with Krishna's happiness. And going forward, Krishna will take care of, because that's the next verse. Krishna will take care of the mess. It's not like we want Krishna to be our janitor, but he'll take care of the mess, your heart and the situation. And if people are not understanding or forgiving or whatever, that's just, that's okay, because you have Krishna connection. Stay Krishna connected with the same thing that how your bhakti life started. And gradually, 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 the process of Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam will, will qualify you to become less mistake prone and more pure. 
Focus on where you want to go, not what's behind you. How's that? Thank you so much. Easier said than done, because the tendency is to whine and complain, and the mind beats us up and all those things. But bhakti is your, is your shelter. Please, pleasing Krishna is your shelter. And just stay in that direction. Be, be, ex, uh, acknowledge the deficiencies, the, the anartas, the whatever mistakes, whatever the shortcomings, etc. Less than pure tendencies. Don't stay there. Move. Move towards the pure side. Krishna will help you. You're not alone. Krishna will help you. And, and the Vaishnavas, the well-wishing Vaishnavas will help you also by their example and by their words. You know, good, well-wishing devotees will do like that. So keep that kind of... So pure association, elevated association, ultimately worship Krishna. That's what we do. Something else. Here's one over here. Is the button on? Not yet. Nah. So the question is on Bhajani of Paramasuka, that verse. Yeah. Where Shila Jiva Goswami is saying that one should feel happy by experiencing Krishna's happiness. Yes. So I'm having a hard time um, understanding that in a practical manner. Why? So... Because at my stage, this is my understanding that I can tell whether I am happy or not, and yes, if my right. happiness is sustained over a period of time with both favorable and distressful situations in life. But how do, in our stage, understand and experience Krishna's happiness? Because scriptures and what we have learned from our parampara is what, we know what makes krishna happy yeah but i'm having a hard time understanding how do we experience through 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 authority i mean let me give you a little re repeat one of Prabhupada's favorite lessons how do you know anything through authority you know that his favorite how do you know you're father is you ask your mother and what, what if your mother t doesn't tell the truth then you're not going to know but you go to the authority that's not a cheater you go to the authority and you can know you can know through authority what's pleasing to krishna and then the second is exper experience that he's saying it's science because there's authority and then there's there's experience you can experience you and I and all of us can experience. Maybe we're dull. We can't experience it like an elevated Vaishnava. But we can experience to some extent Krishna's happiness. Knowing that we're in this mixed position. Less than perfect position, for sure. But through starting with the authority, Guru Sadhu Shastra, ultimately Shastra. And then move in that direction, and that purity comes. And then as your purity comes, then you have more of a direct experience of what is Krishna's happiness. Can someone take care of these children? whose children are doing this. Okay. This is spiritual science. And just become a good scientist. You learn from authority. And then you follow and purif purification. Then you can have more experience, more experience, more capacity to experience Krishna's happiness. Okay. 
Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what I feel like the uh, the description I heard today for purity was like in absolute form, um, that the highest level, where uh, suppose there is a level ten, and I felt like purity is even needed to go to level two, three. Sure. Yeah. So. Uh, I felt like uh, it's a deeper and deeper form of purity, like even following regulative principle. Okay. Uh, there is a purity coming with it. Uh, Good. What are the practical things that at my level I can do to cultivate purity? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. You know, chant w with attention and absorption. Two adjectives, with attention and absorption. You can say offenseless, that's another, but <clears throat> say it. There are many ways to say what I just said. <clears throat> as much as you can achieve that, you can achieve all the rest. So, for, because we do it every day and it's the prime benediction etc. It's the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Back to Krishna Priya's question. We know that's pleasing. So let's do that. As best we can. And you do that every day as best you can. And you'll find your capacity to do the other things and other things and other things and other things and other things, and other things expand from that one thing. At your state, at our state, all of us. Every day. And then you'll, 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 like this first question, you realize, I'm not there yet. <laughs> so now what do you do when you're not there yet? You have negative feelings, oh, I'm not there yet. And I'm, I'm, I'm crummy or I'm deficient or I'm bad or something, something. Just keep going for what, what is going to bring purity and please Krishna, because that's the standard of purity. So I just do that. A another way of saying that I, I've been with Shama Sundar for a number of Japa retreats now, and one of the, the phrases I like is, one of the phrases I like is, how the qualitative way that you take up your chanting every day is like the tip of a spear. The tip of a spear has a point, and the point following behind the point is the shaft of the spear, and that's your life, your, your, your daily devotional service, the shaft of the spear. And then over day after day after the rest of your life, it's, it starts with the tip. So do that with attention and absorption. It, at least continue to try to, to do that. That's what you can do. And everything else will become possible. One more question. Two more questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you made a point about Srila Prabhupada, like where we have been in the moment, if Prabhupada was physically present, like um, if Prabhupada was like, uh, we could have done better, same or worse. Oh yeah, yeah, that one, okay. Yes. But don't we have the instructions of Srila Prabhupada? We have, like, yes. Oh. And how, and how... How good are you or I or any one of us being an instrument of that instruction? There's the instruction, there's the wielder of the instruction, and there's the tool that's being wielded. How sharp, how effective is, are we as a tool? The in Nimitta, the instrument. 
nimitta matra bhavya savya sachin become a, so we're, we're dull instruments. Okay. The, the instruction is not the problem. Mm-hmm. We're dull. To be honest, what to do? Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 and uh, seek purity in the mode of goodness. How to stay happy in the mode of goodness. And uh, stay in the mode of goodness. And stay in the mode of goodness yeah. when there's swirling around of the mind and circumstances. Right. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a cultivation. Uh, it's a cultivation. Uh, there's different ways of saying one, one of the ways is the introduction. You, you like reading Prabhupada's book, so you get an answer to all of these questions, but, but here we go. Introduction to Nectar Devotion. He's paraphrasing the, the definition in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, or Nectar Devotion, about what is bhakti. And he says, bhakti is a sort of cultivation. What does that mean? Bhakti is a sort of cultivation. I'm not there yet, but I'm going to cultivate getting there. And and what do I? Where does my attention go while I'm cultivating, trying to get there? That Krishna should be pleased. Anukoye na Krishna anushilanam. That's another Sanskrit phrase that says, "I'm not there yet, but I, I'm I'm striving to get there with." Shilana, or behavior and conduct that's pleasing to Krishna, favorable to Krishna. Anukulyena Krishna Anushilana. Bhakti is a sort of cultivation. So that's what you do. Following Rupa Goswami especially. And then those who are following Rupa Goswami especially. The followers of the followers of the followers of Rupa Goswami especially. And stay, keep in good association with those Followers of the followers of the followers of Rupa Goswami, they're very sincere, and they're just like it says on the screen here, matra. They don't do anything else. Squeaky clean. They may not be there yet. They're not fully matured yet. You just follow them. Like, don't imitate, but keep in their association and try to please, try to be the servant of those who are serving like that. And it becomes your quality, through their quality. That's, the, that's how a so good association works. Bad association works similarly. You become bad. Okay, I'm going to end. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpataru bhyascha kripa sindhu bhyayavicha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namon. I just want to offer a very warm welcome to people coming from all over the country and the world. Um, it's beautiful to see lovely friends' faces here. Thank you all for being here. I was thinking that the last year we were in a much smaller facility, and if we had to fit everyone in here in the building next door, which was just recently demolished, I don't know how that would have happened. So many thanks to the devotees who have put in endless hours and finances to provide this facility to celebrate such a wonderful festival.
So we're here this, e this weekend to honor His Holiness Rampada Swami and to hear from him and to appreciate how he has impacted our lives. So it's, it's a very meaningful, one of the sweetest events, I'm sure for many of us in the room here. The sweetest events in the year. Uh, we do have a few practical announcements. Uh, my wife is leading the child protection team here in the Eskon neighborhood, so I must get this out of the way, otherwise I may not get dinner tomorrow. Uh, children 12 and under need to be taken care of uh, by parents. You need to watch them, or at least have one a trusted guardian who is watching your children. 13 and above, or 13 to 17, at least know where they are, <laughs> minimally. Anything else on the child protection? Okay, good. Uh, we do have, the t temple does have a facility for a toddler room, so if you have young toddlers and you want to take care of them, you can, there's a toddler room on the first floor, and close by there is a bathroom, so if you've not found the bathroom yet, it's on the first floor. Uh, a request is shoes should be kept on the racks, the shoe racks, not anywhere on the floor, not outside the temple room, kindly put them on the racks so that it looks nice and organized. Um, parking is, obviously we have the temple lot parking, as well as next door, right next to the temple, there's a, I think it's like a dental office or something like that. You can use the parking lot there. And there's also street parking in the subdivisions close to the temple. Don't park on the main street, which is McDowell Road, but certainly the um, uh, nearby subdivisions. Uh, a couple of last things. I was requested to announce that there's a bunch of, there's three crates of books that need to be transferred up to the third floor of the building. So if you can contact Govinda Mohini Mataji to volunteer, we need how many volunteers? 10? As many as we can. So there are about 350 here. So, so if we have maybe 5% can help, it would happen really quickly. So if you can contact her, they're downstairs, they need to go up to the third floor, and we have carts to help get that done. Before we have dinner downstairs in the, um, uh, in the community hall, there's going to be a couple of musical offerings, first by um, Anshutta, is she here? She's there? Okay, great. So that's, that's the first one. There'll be a second one by the group of young girls. Uh, Himangi, right? You're leading that? Okay. So we'll have a couple of musical offerings. Followed by that, we'll have dinner. Hare Krishna. And look forward to a wonderful evening, uh, weekend together. Hare Krishna. Can you do a little up? Can you do a little up? Hi Krishna, today I'll be singing A Baro Karuna Koro as an offering to Guru Maharaj. Why? 
कृष्ण भगो
राधे ये तारे हरि
Okay, who's the print on this? It's the same. It's the same. Okay, you start because.
was beautiful. Let's. So we have dinner now downstairs in the community hall in, on the first floor. And one other announcement is His Grace Shamsundar Prabhu is going to be here in the temple room at 2 a.m. the next two days, Saturday and Sunday. For those who would like to join him to go deeply in the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, with attentiveness and absorption. So tomorrow, 2 a.m. and day after 2 a.m. Monday? Monday as well? No, not on Monday, only Saturday and Sunday. Hare Krishna. Enjoy your dinner.